Hi everybody, my name is Greg Anderson and this is The Good Timekeeping Show. Today, yes, I'm going to post another watch review. Check this out. All right, let's open up the watch case and take a quick look at this guy. This watch is the Casio AE1200WHD-1A. This is commonly referred to by a lot of watch enthusiasts as the Casio Royale. Now that sounds like a James Bond title. And in fact, this kind of looks like a James Bond watch. It's not the watch that James Bond wore in the movie Casino Royale, or even the old spoof version called Casino Royale. No, this watch uh, looks like a Seiko watch that James Bond wore in a movie called Octopussy that came out in 1983. So the original Seiko watch is the Seiko G757 Sports 100 watch. I understand it's somewhat rare and valuable today. <laughs> so I'll put a link in the notes for this video so that you can, uh, you can look that one up if you, if you choose. But yeah, that's a remarkably similar uh, look. This one obviously not being the, the Seiko watch. Now, Roger Moore portrayed James Bond in 1983, and uh, he could do a lot of great things, but he couldn't do everything that James Bond could do. That was a lot of movie magic to make you think that stuntmen and uh, special effects and Roger Moore together could uh, do all those amazing James Bond things. In a similar way, the Seiko G757 Sports 100 watch could not do all the things that James Bond's watch could do. And that was also movie magic and uh, the Seiko watch portraying all those amazing things that the Seiko watch couldn't really do, but James Bond's watch could do. All right. So uh, this is the this is the Casio Royale or AE1200 WHD. Uh, so anyway, th this this does some really neat things. Now, normally I would say uh, maybe this is not going to be my favorite watch because unlike some of the watches that... Uh, that I've talked about recently. See, this watch doesn't have the, the solar cell for automatic charging. However, it does have a 10-year battery. So if you're not going to, uh, you know, have solar cells automatically charging the watch, I, I could trade that off for not having to change the watch battery for 10 years. That's not bad. The other thing this watch does not have is uh, automatic timekeeping with uh, radio control for atomic timekeeping. However, it, it has great accuracy even without that. Now, according to the specs, the accuracy of this watch is plus or minus 30 seconds a month. Actually, uh, it, to me, in my experience, this particular watch has an accuracy closer to maybe uh, 10 or 15 seconds a month, maybe even better than 10 seconds a month. So it's not bad at all. If you're not going to have atomic timekeeping, uh, how about 10 seconds a month accuracy or less? That's pretty good. So, you know, every couple of weeks I can just go in and reset the seconds and I'm in pretty good shape here. Some of the other main features you can see right here, this is a kind of an analog uh, display right there. And this is showing the local time. No matter what other mode the watch is in, you're always going to have the local time displayed right here on this little analog clock. And it's synchronized to, uh, you know, your main timekeeping because those are just LCD generated uh, hands uh, on the on the watch and the little second thing ticking around there on the outside. So I really like that. That's probably the feature that and the world map here that make people think the most of, oh, it's a James Bond watch or it looks like you could, you know, <laughs> do remote control a rocket or something with this watch. Um, also, as you can see, 100, uh, 100 meter water resistance. So that's a great feature there. And uh, also uh, another great feature of this watch, if you're going to go this route is, boy, it doesn't cost much at all. Uh, you can easily find this watch for $30 or less. As I'm making this video right now, it's actually um, less than $25 on Amazon for this watch. There are also some variations of this. This one is the one that looks most like the James Bond watch. Uh, that Seiko watch. However, you can also get it with, um, you know, kind of a resin plastic uh, case. And also there's a version that has kind of a, uh, you know, the, the resin plastic watch band instead of this metal bracelet. And also there's another version of it with kind of a more rounded shape and and maybe the dials on this side instead of that side. And, and yeah, that other version, um, well, the other versions in metal and also in plastic resin, 
uh, all have the same functions and features. So uh, if you decide to get those, hey, it's module number 3198, or this one is module 3299, uh, you'll find the exact same instructions that you can get from the Casio website as far as setting up the watch to, for all its uh, features and functions. This watch has a lot of what might be considered standard features and functions for Casio watches these days. Uh, you know, stopwatch, countdown timer, alarms, that sort of thing. But uh, right here from the main timekeeping mode, it actually has uh, some access to the, the other time zone uh, displays. So kind of that world time emphasis here. This little button here on the lower right side, if you push this, there's a second time zone you can quickly go to. So I've gone from my home time zone, the, the mountain time zone in the United States, to the eastern time zone, New York City. So T2 for the second time zone that you can quickly access. Uh, T3, well, I've just got it set for London. T4, I've got it set for, you know, Moscow. And so you can quickly access those other time zones right there. Now, if you'd like to display some other time zone all the time, and just press this mode button on the left side, on the lower left side. And now, uh, whatever time zone you've chosen around the world, that'll be the one that it just shows all the time. And you'll notice, while it's showing this other time zone in this uh, digital display here, that little analog display up there is still showing the home time zone that I've selected. So that's kind of fun. Now here's a function that you might not figure out on your own, but it's in the owner's manual if you want to quickly swap this world time time zone that you've chosen with your home time zone, push these two buttons here uh, on top, the, the left and right side top buttons at the same time, and there you go. Now you've swapped and see how the, the home time zone up here has switched to UTC, and this one here has switched to the Denver time zone. So that's a quick way to make that swap if, if you know, if you travel a lot and you're constantly going from your home time zone to some other time zone, you can just quickly, you know, program that in and swap them like that. Okay, now, next is, let's see, this, this is the alarm mode. So you have five alarms, and you can select the different alarms by pushing, uh, let's see, oh, it's, yeah, it's this button on the lower right side, choose which alarm you want to go, and, and also, you've got um, the hourly beep that you can you can turn on or off so it beeps every hour now something that's unique to this watch uh, compared to other watches that i have is you have the option of setting the alarm to either go off every day at the designated time or just once and then go into standby and you know just kind of be off from then on so that's kind of nice if I know that, uh, for example, tomorrow morning I have to get up at six o'clock, but most mornings I don't have to. Then when I go to set the alarm to turn it on, so I use the button on the upper uh, left side to do that. So uh, you can see down here, it shows that the alarm is off. Now I push this button and it has a little one on. So just, it's gonna be on one time. Push this again and now it just says it's on. So that means it's gonna come on every day at that time. So if I have it here on this one on setting, then, you know, tomorrow or the next time it reaches this time, the alarm's going to go for 10 seconds and then just turn off and not come on again until I, I tell it to. I, I, I really like that. So you've got that option on five different alarms. Here's a countdown timer, and this is fun. You can set the countdown timer to go uh, anywhere from one second up to 24 hours. So a lot of these clocks that have a... Uh, you know, have, have a, a countdown timer for these watches. You can only set hours and minutes, but you can't set seconds. On this one, you can scroll through and you can do hours, minutes, and seconds. And if you were to take this down, let's see, this way, and set the countdown timer to zero, that's actually a true 24-hour countdown. So start and stop that right here. So I started it and see, okay, 24 hours and that's kind of fun how it uh, counts down with the tenths of a second right there in that little box so okay and and again while you're doing this countdown timer you still have your analog display showing the local time right there and then you've got uh, the stopwatch function so start and stop the stopwatch right here and it's uh, hours minutes seconds and hundredths of a second you also have the the split mode here if you push this button on the upper left side 
and uh, you know lap timer right there so you can do that as you go so pretty standard as far as uh, stopwatches uh, on watches go but uh, i really like it's a really clear nice display showing hours minutes seconds hundreds of a second all at the same time while it's showing up here your local time so those are the the main modes and now that i've gone back to my my main timekeeping mode showing my local time right here in the digital uh, display, you can see that um, it's, it has by default taken me back to my home time zone, not any of these other ones that I've chosen. So if I chose, you know, Moscow time, and then I scroll through the different modes and go back to regular timekeeping mode, it's taken me to that first time zone that I chose. So by default, it always goes back there. Now, perhaps you noticed that uh, every time I push a button to go into a different mode or to start and stop these timers, there's a little bit of a beep. I, I don't know how well you can hear that on the video because I don't have the microphone pointed at the watch right now. But uh, maybe you don't like having that beep. Every time you push a button, there's a beep. It makes it a little bit hard to use this watch discreetly if you're in a meeting or something and you're just beeping all the time. So one way to make that beep go away is uh, I'll take it back here to the to the regular timekeeping mode. And I'm going to uh, hold down this button right here on the lower left side, the mode button. Just hold it down. And now you can see up in this display here, it says mute. And so the mute means it's no longer going to have a little beep every time you push this button. See, I can scroll through all these modes and I'm not getting the beep. If this watch is brand new and you just got it, now you want to set it up, hold this button here on the upper left side and you'll get into the setting mode. First thing you can do is just set the seconds. And that's kind of nice to have that be the first thing that pops up in case all you want to do is uh, reset the seconds for, uh, you know, if you, if you push this button down here, it'll reset it to, to the nearest minute, either forward or back to zero that out. So uh, again, if, if you're just trying to, keep it super accurate because it doesn't have built in uh, atomic timekeeping, then maybe once or twice a month, you know, you could just reset the seconds. Then uh, the next thing you can choose is whether or not you want daylight saving time to be on. So that's a quick and easy way to turn on and off daylight saving time when those changes occur. Next, you can set your home time zone. And it's kind of fun that up here on the map, your time zone is going to kind of blink there in the LCD as you move that around. Uh, okay, next, uh, you're going to set your hours and minutes. Here you can set it to 12 hour or 24 hour display. Okay, next, you can uh, set the year, uh, month, date, and it will automatically know the day of the week. Here, you can set the, the, the backlight to either go for three seconds or this is actually one and a half seconds. So you can have that backlight, you know, stay on a little bit longer if you'd like to. That'll wear the battery down a little bit better, uh, a little bit faster, but it's a 10 year battery, so you'll, you'll probably be okay. So that's the initial setup there. If I go into the next mode, which is this world time mode, um, well, again, I can choose whichever time zone I want it to be displaying there. And I do that by pushing this button here on the lower right side. And that's just gonna scroll through the map from uh, west to east until I reach the time zone that I want to have displayed there. And then I'm good to go. And again, you know, there's your alarm countdown timer stopwatch. So well, let's just take it out of the case here and have a look at it. See, it's got that nice bracelet on there. Push these two little tabs here on the sides and then that opens up the clasp. And there you go, you know, uh, pretty standard as far as sizing the watch band. You've got a little spring bar uh, right in here and you can adjust that. You've got four places right here in the clasp that you can use to fine tune how tight that is. And also you can add or remove some links here from uh, either end of, of the, the bracelet before you reach the clasp. This is what those links look like uh, on the inside of the watch band. So you take a, a nice little tool like this if you have it and you just push it inside this hole here, hold it, hold it tight and you, and you push up on that in order to push uh, to push this piece out that's going to allow you to remove a link. See, you've got that right there. Okay, so 
you know, it's a little, it's a little tricky, but you can, you can figure it out just a little bit of know how and you can get that uh, loosened off of there to add or remove links. Sometimes with a watch band like this, uh, it can be really tight. You really got to struggle to push that out. I found that on this one, I don't think it's too bad. Let me just see if I can just, uh, demonstrate this really quickly right here. So just kind of push on that. See, that wasn't so bad. And then, uh, you know, that will allow me to pull that out. See, so yeah, if you, uh, if you can't do it uh, yourself, you know, you probably have a friend who could do it or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the last resort is take it to a jeweler at the mall and see if they can uh, do that for you. Because it's a pretty easy thing, really, uh, as watch bands go to adjust the size and, and uh, add or remove links. So you've got your stainless steel band here and the clasp and everything. And even though um, this this part around the around the case looks like it's metal, I'm not so sure it is. It, it As I look here on the side, it looks more like painted plastic. You know, looking at the seam right here, that looks like some sort of artifact from some sort of plastic injection molding. You know, it feels pretty solid, but I, I, I'm not so sure that that exact piece is metal. And you know, what do you expect? It's not an expensive watch. Oh, and of course I need to do a formal display of the backlight. So a nice, a nice little amber colored backlight. And it works pretty well. And if you use it a lot, I guess you'll drain the battery. You won't get a full 10 year uh, <laughs> battery life on that. But I think that's a, that's a nice backlight. If you do need to get a new battery, it's the CR2025 lithium battery. So not that difficult to find. And it should last you about 10 years. And that's not bad. So finally, let's just put this on the scale and see how that uh, measures up. Okay, 85 grams, not so bad. That's comparable to, say, this other Casio watch that I have. I'll do a review on this soon. <laughs> or something like this G-Shock watch is obviously going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit lighter weight. This one here, a little bit lighter weight because, you know, they've, they've got uh, the resin plastic watch band instead of a metal watch band. But uh, yeah, it's, it's still a very comfortable watch. You know, that, that's not a bad weight at all. All right, just to clarify a couple points before I close, when I set the watch to mute, so that it wouldn't beep every time I pushed a button. That did not stop the hourly chime from beeping. It doesn't stop the alarms from making a sound and it doesn't stop the countdown timer from making a sound. It just doesn't make a sound every time you push a button. All right, and so with that, we'll close this episode of the Good Timekeeping Show and I hope to see you again on another one coming soon. Stay tuned.